So I'm looking at a screen right now that we probably don't have on camera, but maybe you could send me the slide so we could show sure. people. Yeah. And it says web page design journey. And look, this looks like UX design. Content outline, whiteboard wireframe, wireframe mockup, and then build. And so it's kind of like uh, requirements list and content. And then you go to white, uh, whiteboard wireframing. Can you give us an example of how that's done like on a whiteboard? to show like uh, just maybe something that you've done in the past where you're given a few features or a few pieces of content uh, and like how do you translate that into a sketch? For sure, yeah. Do you want me to do it on the whiteboard or just yeah. talk you through it? it? Can we do it on the whiteboard? Yeah, we can do it on yeah. the whiteboard, sure. Okay, so like give us an example of what you would teach your students and just walking through that four step process right. on like an example for whatever type of business okay. that you could think so of. So we'll say it's taco truck. Uh, we'll, we'll just make it up. Uh, We'll say it's Tom's Tacos, okay? Uh, what we like to have the students do, or, or what I like to have my team work on, is finding out within this industry what everyone else is doing. Again, we're trying to capture that, that common language that people are used to seeing in the websites of the competition. Now, we don't wanna make exact copies, obviously, of their website, per se, but the type of content that they're representing is important. It's a valid, someone else has already done a lot of research, especially on bigger bigger websites. Uh, so we can we can take from that what we want. Uh, so let's say we, we look at uh, website uh, number one, and they've obviously they've got a navigation. Uh, they probably have a um, carousel of tacos. Uh, there's a, uh, they've got their social proof. They have a map of upcoming events. They have a contact us, let's say a form in the footer, okay? Now we go to website number two. They also have a navigation. Uh, they have social proof. They have a map, but they don't have the contact us form. Uh, what is what? carousel of carousel tacos. car of tacos? Yeah. That, I was like, what did I do? <laughs> also, when you get to my age, you forget how to spell the word carousel, and you just write cars. Okay, uh, <laughs> so we look at what's common between these two, and we say, okay, that's what probably most people are expecting to see. Uh, Tom's Tacos is a taco truck. This is also a taco truck. This is also a taco truck. So we are, we're trying to find what's common. And so we identify that we need a nav. We definitely want to have social proof. We have carousel and we're going to do a map. Uh, there's also a conversation with, with the customer. What is it that you would like to see on your website? Um, what is, for you, what is, what is success for your website? That's a big conversation. And we pick and choose, we cherry pick from that conversation. What can we add to this stuff? So from that now, we have a list of content. Is it saying exactly what we want to say? Oh, you know what's probably missing from this is maybe a little about us blurb. This is a very basic right. example here. But these are also common. So we're not, we're not worried about what we're saying in the About Us blurb, but what we are concerned about and what, what's most important is where we're going to put that, okay? So we know we need a navigation. Where is that navigation going to go? Looking at our peer research, both sites have the navigation at the top of the page, and it looks something like that, right? So we're not worried about what, what's being said. We're just worrying about where we're placing that. Uh, a carousel of tacos. Right? We need social proof. We're going to drop that down here at the bottom. And probably need some contact stuff. And then maybe in a box here, we've got a contact form. I don't know why a taco truck would need a freaking contact us form, but these guys are gonna have one, right? And then here we've got blurb about us and 
uh, let's let's throw in a picture as well. This is something that we didn't see on the other sites, but we feel uh, that maybe we want to show our employees. Cool. So this is this is just a basic layout. Now we don't we will do this several times. Uh, we will have other people come in. We'll do uh, so the students all take a, a whiteboard. And then I have them do just a carousel gallery walk. And they come and they take a different colored pen and they put notes. Have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? Folks that aren't on their team, folks that aren't even part of their industry, but to get an outside perspective of what, what we could expect to see here or things that they might, might not understand. Uh, and that's real, real important. This is a pretty, I mean, basic standard layout, right? We'd see this all over the place. Um, but you get some weird things when, when students start putting together and, and, and green designers don't care so much about like how things line up. They just care about the fact that it's actually on the page, right? I don't know if you've experienced that, but when I was designing, that's all that seemed to matter to me is it was the it, content's there. Was it on the page, right? It's like, what do you mean uh, layout and design, right? Does that matter? I think I want to put a logo up there and have the navigation here. Because we need the business name on here. Cool. So everything lines up. So when the students are drawing this, we get a lot of wonky stuff. And that, that gets identified when we do that gallery walk. And when it's a team, the team takes a stab at it. Everyone does it. Um, when I worked for Shatter Electric in the global marketing department, we would do, we had one uh, advert that we, we all designed and there were 200 sketches that we did. Um, and this is, this is a sketch, whiteboard sketches is, is fantastic. Uh, doing it on paper is also fantastic as well. Um, but we had 200 iterations, different versions, and we threw them all up on the conference rooms all over the building and just walk this thing. What works? What's communicating correctly? Some had just minor, minor differences, but when you see the comparisons, you really start to see what is going to communicate better. And, and you develop that language, that common language. If you're a green designer, this is something that, this is a way that you can start to speak that language, start to see is getting that feedback, that constant revision, being able to revise yourself and what you understand about how this type of stuff works. Uh, so from here, then this goes to the mock-up stage where they actually build it, and we start looking at things like pixels and you know how stuff lines up, um, and then finally they they build that. But they do not get to go to that stage until these two things are successfully executed. And I love the fact that this is like simple, and you did this fast. This is like what 30 seconds to yes. do. I mean, you're explaining it as you're going, but it, it doesn't have to be complicated. So no. the wireframe is just supposed to be executed fast, quick sketch, and you could do up to 200 of these. And the same process. It seems like it doesn't only work just for websites, but you could do the same thing for app development right. or for any kind of user experience that, uh, that a brand might have. Yeah. And so if I understand it correctly, it seems like the process is first to understand the users, right? And then once we have that, we build out our content list. And the way we do that is by looking at a competitive audit or what did you call it? And not a competitive audit, but pure research. Pure research. Right. Okay. So same kind of thing. We're looking. We're not trying to reinvent the wheel. There's nothing necessarily unique. You don't want to be completely different out there because we're going to confuse users as to what they're already expecting when they go to your uh, whatever we're designing. So pure research and let that help us inform what are those basic elements we should have, and then what else do we want to add? So this is we're building out our requirements list, our content list, and then you just throw it on the board and do a few different right. sketches and see what works. Yeah. And so, and then the next step after this is going out to mock-up and how fast should this whole process take to where we actually have uh, something visible to see? I, I like to see this within a couple hours, honestly. Um, when we do an app development, so the students, when we did the design sprint recently, they were building applications. Uh, it's a little different. So with the app, we're talking about the user journey. Uh, that problem statement, how do they currently solve that problem right now? If I'm lost, I need to get to an address. What's my current journey? Well, I go to buy a map and then I try and, you know, poke around and find, I know you're too young to remember these things called Thomas guides. Mm -hmm. uh, it, was a, it was a map that was this thick. It was a book of maps for your general area. <laughs> and you literally could look it up like a phone book and find any address wherever it was that you were at. And every car, like when I lived in Los Angeles, like you had to have a Thomas Guide. Every single car had a Thomas Guide. Uh, but when we're designing apps, 
we're looking at, again, what's the problem statement? What's the most essential uh, basic thing that we need to communicate? How does that user journey look without the app? And then how does it look with the app? And then we do the crazy eights. And so we do this on a piece of paper, fold that paper up into, into quarters, and we take one minute and we draw just the piece that is essential to solving that problem statement. Uh, so it's a little modified version of this, but, uh, but it's yeah. the same concept, communicating what's, what's important, Get distilling down to the things that are common that solves, solves the problem. Yeah, and it's getting us in the habit of fast iterations, yes. not thinking too, too much on it, right. and just getting something so that we can look at it. I'm a huge uh, proponent of uh, quantity reads quality. For sure. And when I first heard that, I thought, that's dumb. <laughs> I want to be like an artist and I want to paint my, the most beautiful my masterpiece. Yeah, the website in the first draft. And you know what? It doesn't work like that. Not, not yeah. initially. When you're first yeah. learning design, it doesn't work like that. Uh, but the more you iterate through this, eventually you're going to hit yeah. something that that works. Yeah, and I think that was Mark Zuckerberg's you know, mantra, which is move fast and break things. And yes. I, they, I think they've since updated to something more corporate safe, but uh, <laughs> the, the sentiment is the same, is get your MVP out there. Don't spend too much time on it. Uh, Jason, I think this is awesome. Guys, I think the, the key takeaway to UX design that we got from Jason was, was just make it simple. The UX design is just trying to make interactions simple for our users, make them feel smart. And it takes a lot of work, a lot of thought behind it. But that thought should be done fast, fast iterations. But at least you have a framework, a process to follow, which is content list, wireframe, mock-up, and then go to development. Jason, thank you so much for peeling back the screen awesome. and letting us look at what's going on. Thanks for Appreciate having me. It. Appreciate it.